Hey guys, what's up? It's Swotor Nerd here. Uh, me and Quinn are just here on Osus today, and we decided we're gonna do a Datacron guide for Osus. I know we're a little bit behind the times here, but better late than never. We'll add it to our Datacron series, so... Yeah, we're gonna... First of all, we're gonna grab the Presence one. Anyways, guys, first off, I just wanted to say really quickly, if you like the Datacron guides, if you like the Swotor content on my channel, absolutely do me a favor, hit that like button, leave a comment down below what you enjoy about these videos, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Uh, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss the uploads. I do upload about once or twice a week. Anyways, so for the Presence Datacron here on Ossus, where are we? So first of all, we're by the where the Heroic happens here, the Heroic 2 Plus in that bunker right there. So if you have that already, just use that quick travel. It'll put you right over there, and then you just have to jog over here. Where we actually are, I'll open up the map so you guys can see. We're in the Ancient Ruins portion of the map, and we're right about here. Looks like we've aggroed some droids really quick, this set of droids that roam around. We're just going to take care of them really quickly here. There we go. Anyway, so, like I said, right in this part of the map of Ancient Ruins, if you come right here, you'll notice that there is actually a little cave in the wall here. Um, so we're just going to duck right in here, and we're just going to follow it in. Got a little bit of graphics glitch right there. There we go. A little bit of screen hop, but we're going to hop all the way down into this little chamber right here. Now we're going to see there's an, uh, a dead body right here, Crushed Explorer. So if we right click that and examine that, give it a second here. There, you receive grapple device times one. Perfect. So that's what we need for the first step of the present state of Kron. And I will see you guys when we come back for the second step, okay? And welcome back, guys. So, for the second part of the Ossus Presence Datacron, I'll show you where we, guys where we are. Uh, we are in the Ossus Canyons, uh, right at the far edge here, right by where the path makes a little V, and we're sitting right there. So I'll close the map up, turn it around for you guys here. So when you see this big arch right here, and you're right by this big dead tree, and you can actually see the Datacron right there. So we're going to head up there. Uh, we're going to try and stay mounted for now. Uh, just sort of duck around these rocks here. And we just gotta try and jump up there just right. There we go. Got the first jump. It'd be a little bit treacherous, but it's actually easier if you guys are mounted. This jump's a little bit tougher, but no worries. We will take another try at it here. And one more. Let's go. There we go. And one more little jump right there. Perfect. Now our grappling hook is going to allow us to click this little grapple point right here. Perfect. So there we are. And here is the presence data crown. Let's take a look at it here. We'll play the little cinematic right here. The presence data crown. Let's see what it's going to increase it by here. Give us one second. Plus five to presence. Now, if you guys don't know, presence is the stat that increases the effectiveness of your companions. Um, of course, your companions are affected by the influence level you have them at as well, but presence definitely helps as well. So plus five is not too shabby at all. But anyways, guys, that's how you do the presence data cron, and we're going to swap over to the next one here, and I will see you guys there. Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to do the Ossus Mastery Datacron next, so I'm just going to show you guys where we are again. Uh, we're back in Ancient Ruins. The quickest way to get here is from the farm's entrance, and we're right in this sort of middle area facing the rock wall right here. So, when you get, what you'll see when you get here, you'll see the path sort of leads up to this little cave right here. So we're going to hop into this little cave, and it's going to take us right up to the Datacron. Uh, so one thing you'll notice here when you get in here is these little blue mushrooms here on your right side. You're going to want to start platforming up the wall. I apologize in advance. The camera's going to glitch a little bit because we're getting in such tight angles here. But yeah, you, so you just follow this little path up and right here you'll notice a little indent in the wall right here. So we're going to go up and there's a set of stairs. This part's fairly easy. There's a little bit of platforming coming up. Uh, not really difficult. The hardest part of it is 
trying to get your camera to see. So you'll notice you're going to hit this little dead end right here. I'm zoomed out as far as I can. That's how tight it is in here. But if you can see up the wall here, there's sort of a little path we're going to follow. So I'm going to do my best to show you it, show you what we're going to do from the ground level here. So we're going to, with my cursor. So we're going to start out on our right side. We're going to platform up these rocks and onto this platform. So we'll do that first. And I'll show you guys what that looks like. So just little jumps. Make your way up. Turn to face what you're looking at. Take a jump. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look around. We're going to see what we're going to jump at next. So you're going to do a complete 180. There's this big wide wedge, uh, sorry, ledge right here. And we're going to take a big jump, land on that. And next step is this little pillar right here. So just little jumps. Make your way up onto that. And you're going to turn 90 degrees. You're going to jump onto this ledge right here. Just little jumps. You got to be careful. Otherwise, it can knock you right down at the beginning. Now you're going to want to do just a tiny little jump here. Don't overshoot. Be careful. Just angle yourself. So if you do overshoot, you hit this wall right here. And we're going to head onto this little ledge. And right up onto the pillar here. Just again, little tiny jumps. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to try and get onto... This piece right here can be a little bit of a pain. And now onto this one. And immediately turn, you're going to be looking at a rock wall here, but you're going to jump right up it. And it's going to put you right on a nice easy path right here. We're at the end of the hard platforming part. Just lit, don't, carefully don't run right off the edge there. So just follow the path up here. Now you want to be careful. We're aiming for this ledge right here. If you hit this ledge, you're going to have to do the whole thing again. I don't know if I can get all the way up here to make it easier. Let's see here. No, it looks like you can't. We're going to hug this edge, being very careful not to go too low. As you can see, it's a little bit of a jump. So we're going to take a bit of a running jump at it. In fact, we're going to use Mad Dash. This is a warrior ability. It's going to take us right over there. Just because I don't want to fall off and have to do the whole thing again. And here it is. It's our Osus Red Mastery Datacron. So we'll see the cutscene for it right now. See what kind of stats it gives us here. Well, it's going to give us mastery, of course. But Plus six to mastery. So again, that's a fairly powerful Datacron. Most of the base game ones are plus three. So anything over plus three is fairly powerful. So plus six to mastery, that's pretty good. Anyways, guys, we've got one more to do. It's the most complicated one on this planet. It is the endurance one, and we will see you guys there, okay? Hey guys, welcome back. We're gonna do the endurance one here. I'm on a different character for this one. I wanna let you guys know why you have to have finished the Ossus story arc if you want to get this data cron. So I'm on a character that's done the awesome story arc. So anyways, we're back in the ancient ruins area. We are right by the little cave that we grabbed the grapple hook for the presence data cron. Instead of going back in there, we're going to follow this little rock wall along here. And there's actually a second secret cave right at the cliff edge here. You can see it there. It's actually a phase, this one. Um, like I said, you do have to have a, do this on a character that's finished the entire Asa storyline. Otherwise, you won't be able to get into a couple of the phases on this. And this one takes some time. It's going to take you about half an hour to an hour. It took me about an hour, but I was recording it, so I had to redo a couple of the sections. But anyway, so you're going to come in here and you're going to see these runes right here. Um, as far as I know, they're always in the same order. Blue, yellow, white, orange, and then green. And so that's the order we're going to do them in. I'm going to show you guys where all the runes are. So if it's ever this if this is ever in a different order, then just do them in the order shown on the wall right there. So for me, blue was first, so we're going to do that one first. I'll show you guys where we are. We're in the ancient ruins area. We're right by the cave entrance that leads all the way down to the Ossus Canyons area. And we're just a little ways up this sloped mountain right here. Uh, the rune is right at the top, right up here where I'm circling. So we're just going to mount up and we're going to try and find our way up. You can sort of see the path to the left of the screen right there. So uh, we're going to do it on our jetpack because I find it's a little bit easier to uh, jump on the jetpack than a large speeder. Uh, we're just going to play around here until we find the right spot and we'll just make our way up this little bit of a linear path right here. 
some of these jumps can be a little slippery if you hit them just wrong you'll actually fall off and have to do the whole thing from scratch it's not too bad though uh this one's a little bit difficult there we go and up and up one more time and we're going to turn around towards the center and this part was really easy i just slid all the way up pretty much uh, zoom in a little bit so you guys can see right here you can see that first rune right there we're going to jump over that little gap right there I, I did get stuck in it once so just watch out for that and there's the blue rune so we're going to zoom in on it a little bit so you guys can see it right there and we're going to channel it only channel these once if you guys channel them more than once you'll have to start the whole thing from scratch all right so now we're going to head over to the second rune and that is going to be the yellow one um, it is just at the bottom of that waterfall here. Right now I'm in the spawn camp in Ossus Canyons for the Catacombs Taxi. Um, and we're going to be heading over to that little land bridge right there. So, Right down there. So, If you're an Imperial play player, this is super easy. I haven't actually done Ossus on Republic character yet, so I'm not sure where the nearest Republic Taxi is. Anyway, so we're going to just duck down past these Imperial soldiers here. And we're going to take a sharp right towards the waterfalls here. And you want to go to the big rock island in the middle. And then I'll show you guys. It's sort of hidden by the waterfall. But there's actually a little ledge down there. We're going to jump right for that. Um, this jump is easy to miss. I did miss it a couple of times. So just watch you jump. Um, take a bit of a running jump at it. Just to make sure you get it. And we're just going to line ourselves up. And there we go. Perfect. Landed on the ledge. We'll zoom in so we can see past the waterfall. And there is the rune. I'm just going to dismount. I'm going to hug the wall a little bit here so I don't slip off and get close enough to click it. All right. Click it. See it. The pulse go out. And that is the second one. All right. Moving on to the third rune. This is in the farms area. I'm going to open up the map here right at the very top of the map right at the very top there. So if I turn, close the map and turn my character around here, you can actually see the entire farms area behind me. And there's this little dark spot right here. If you walk up to it, it's actually a cave. It's a tiny little narrow path. We're gonna follow it all the way in. And there's gonna be our third rune at the end. Uh, if you guys are wondering why this Datacron takes so long, don't worry. This is the easy stuff. Getting these five runes is the easy part. The hard part comes after that. Anyways. That's number three. Moving on to the fourth. This is one of the reasons you have to be, one of the areas you have to have completed the Ossus story for. Uh, you can grab this rune, but we're going to be back here in this Jedi library later, and you wouldn't be able to progress if you haven't done the Ossus story arc. So anyways, we're in the Jedi library. The entrance is right behind me right now. Uh, we're just going to follow this all the way in. We're going to keep going straight here towards where the daily areas are. But instead of turning right there where you would for the daily areas, you're going to go, keep going straight here. And we're going to jump up on these pots, jump over this into this little secret area here. It's not even on the map. We're going to hang a left, go all the way to the very back corner here. And there you can see the rune in behind that rock pile. So we're just going to jump up once and come in here and click the rune. And that is our number four rune. So we're just going to click that and grab that for you guys. And we're going to head on to the next rune. This is our final rune. We are back in the ancient ruins. Seems to be most of them are in this area. Uh, except for this time we're quite a ways up towards the top of the map here. Uh, landmarks, I'll just turn it around, is right where that droid boss spawns for the one daily mission. And so I'm going to dismount here. I'm going to switch to the jetpack so you guys can see it. This one's a little harder to see the path, but you basically just want to follow this sort of mini ledge that I'm on all the way across here just about fell down here but managed to get back up sort of got stuck right here we're going to take a little bit of a jump at that there's a couple little spots you can get stuck here my character actually got stuck a few times and i had to restart this so just watch where you're jumping here just sort of follow the rock path along i tried to get up top there uh we're gonna try and go around this way and hope we can get up here yeah looks like we can perfect here is the rune that's the final rune so we'll dismount and we'll click that one and now we have all five runes now if you guys want to make sure you've done this step properly what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that very first cave right there so we're back in the cave and you guys can actually see there's a little yellow circle above the runes if you see that that means you've done this step properly 
So now that that's there, we're going to move on to the next step of the Datacron. Alright, so we're back in the Jedi Temple Library. Uh, we've got a green phase in front of us. I'll show you guys where we are. We're right where the mission where you go into the Jedi Temple during the Ossus story arc. And this is a phase that if you haven't done the Ossus story arc, you're not going to be able to get in here if you're doing the Datacron. So that's why I'm on my Bounty Hunter right now. I haven't done it yet on my Warrior, and I don't plan to until I finish the Warrior class story. I mean... I mean, I've done the Warrior class story nine times, but I'm really enjoying taking it slow and just playing through it again. So we're going to follow this area all the way through until we see uh, this little ledge right in front of us. And you can just faintly see right over there behind that statue, that little yellow circle again. And that's just a hint for us to know where to go. So we're going to go straight. We're going to jump up on this ledge right here, and we're just going to follow it around this pillar all the way around and you can actually see the floors caved in by this cobweb right here really dark looking down there but we're gonna take a jump once and twice and i'll angle the camera up and this is pitch black now you can do this in the pitch black but it's going to be way easier if you guys open up your graphics settings and narrow and turn all your graphics all the way down to minimum it's going to make it daylight in here so you're not jumping around in the dark so here we are. This is right where you enter the cave. We're going to jump up on this little ledge right here. You can follow. This is the part that is time consuming and takes forever. But as you can see, minimum graphics settings. Yeah, it looks like a potato, but you can actually see where you're going. So jump up one more time. Up again, right up top here. And we're going to take a running jump at this ledge right here. Same thing here. Hug the wall. Line up this one. Take a bit of a running jump. Turn and look at this little outcrop opposite you. Jump onto that one and straight across you're just sort of following the path it's fairly self-explanatory especially with the graphics turned down so you can see what you're doing you really feel like challenging yourself you could do it in the dark but i mean we've all jumped for datacrons who wants to keep who wants to make it harder than it actually is so we're just going to follow this path all the way up here and we're going to jump across to the other side again go these rocks are slippery if you fall down at any point here you're going to have to run back to the beginning of the section and restart over there's three sections to do here so we're just going to uh oh looks like we're stuck okay we're going to jump, try and get out of that there we go we just want to get right by those blue mushrooms right there and we're stuck again this is a little bit frustrating ran into this issue a little while ago on another character but I end up, ended up not getting the data con on because I was getting too frustrated, but got out of it there. And so that's the first jumping area. I'm just going to use my mercenary ability to jet backwards onto this because I didn't want to miss that jump. So that's the first platforming area. Now we're going to move on to the second. This one's really short. We're just going to come forward a little bit. You can see the rocks to my left. We're going to actually platform on those. I'm just going to reset my recording here and we'll come back to do that. Okay, so I turned around, I'm facing the opposite side of that little rock pile. We're just going to follow it up here. Take a couple jumps at it. I don't know if you jump too far, you could pro you probably end up having to redo the first section all over again, because you can see the ledge is right there, and we're getting, we're getting closer and closer to it. This jump took me a couple tries when I first did it. Anyway, so we're going to angle it towards the cliff here so we don't over jump and have to redo the first section. Try and get up on this last rock right here. There we go. Scoot forward on it a little bit, turn right around, and we want to try and get for this ledge. It looks like a super high jump, but this one's actually really easy. Get about halfway and just up jump. And we're just going to look for the path right here. Uh, looks like we do one or two things. We're going to keep going. Yeah, we're going to keep going straight. All right, so we're going to hug the left side, just follow this path all the way across. There's a little bit of a drop here. Be careful. I did fall on this at one point. Makes you have to reset. So just jump over that. Uh, one more jump. And we're going to get to a narrow little area that moves up. There we go. And there's a really narrow little spot right here. We're going to scoot through that. And it's going to open up into more of a tunnel here. Again, this is all pitch black if your graphics are turned up. So if you can't see in here, turn your graphics down to the barest minimum. And you'll be able to see no problem. All right, so moving on to part three, you're going to move up this little ledge on your left as you go into the cave here. This part's really easy. You're just going to turn around. You're going to take a little bit of a run at this. Oh, no, we fell down. Uh, we're just going to reset and do that again. So yeah, hug the left side where there's this long ramp here. Move up it a little bit. 
a little bit of time. Patience is the key here. Take a running jump. There we go. And we're going to turn directly to our left. And we're just going to follow this ledge. And that is our last jump for that section. So just hug this. It opens up. Turns into a really steep little hill here. Your camera's going to clip a little bit. Don't worry about that. Just follow it all the way up. And you can actually see this open area. And we're going to have to hit two buttons in this area. So the first one is to our left right here. It's glowing blue. And then we can see these open areas here. And we're going to have to platform across it. Unfortunately, my recording did glitch out for this area. So now you can see there's a force field over it. It's because I already hit both buttons. But I'm going to show you guys how to platform across it anyway. Because when you first get in here, like you can see when I in the previous section, the button was glowing blue and there was no force field. So you'd click that first button and then you'd have to platform across this. So you'd take a jump there. You just hug around this pillar very carefully. Don't jump across, jump towards the wall here. You won't make the wide jump. Take a run at it, jump, and there we go. And one more, and that's how you get platform over the first section. I've got a little bit of a run here. Uh, coming up on the left side, you can actually see the Datacron. When you first come in here and get over here, there's gonna be a force field around it and it's not gonna be clickable. So you're gonna have to keep going to this section right here. So how to get around this section. Now there's a force field here, so I can't actually show you guys very well because my recording glitched out, but right where my cursor is you're going to want to jump for that and you jump over that little pillar on the outside you just basically hug the wall so you'll land right here and you're going to have to jump around that pillar right there to that section right where my cursor is and then straight up to that ledge that's how you'd get around that section uh, then you'd follow it over to here you jump towards the wall again to get over this and then you'd come around this corner here you take a long jump here you'd have to take a run at it I would have fallen through right there. Um, if you fall once, it will actually reset it, and you'll be it'll put you back at the beginning of this area, and you won't have to redo the whole platforming thing. If you fall twice, you'll have to redo the whole thing from scratch. So then you jump over this, and you click this button right here. Uh, so once you click that button, what happens is this force field comes up, and that's where I noticed my recording had glitched, and so I went back to the beginning and re-recorded this section of it but unfortunately I lost the footage from when before the force field was up so now we can come click this datacron right here it says holocron of Udbanar. let's click it unfortunately that doesn't give you the datacron it just disappears as does the force field see the force field's gone okay I'm tired of potato looking graphics I'm going to turn my graphics back up to max oh my god that looks so much better holy crap guys my game actually looks decent again holy crap all right, moving on from that, we're going to go all the way back to this ancient ruins area, cave right by the edge of the cliff. Just show you guys right on the edge of the map here, back to our secret cave, and we're going to go all the way up here. One more time. This is the last time we have to go up here, guys. If you've made it this far, congratulations. You've just done one of the more in-depth datacrons in this game, aside from the Makeb Endurance Datacron, which is a real pain. Anyways, so this pillar is now glowing blue. So if we click on it, we'll get a little bit of a cutscene here. See if I'll click on it. There we go. Alright, so it is a green endurance datacron. Uh, downside to it, after all that work, it's only a plus two endurance datacron. Upside, there's a cool little weapon tuning, which more than makes up for, in my opinion, it being only a plus two endurance for all that extra work. So. You let the cutscene play through right here, and the screen's going to flash white. There we go. There's a codex entry. Ud Benar, he's actually a character in some of the comics that came out when this game launched. And if you open your inventory now, you should see something called the Ud Benar Weapon Tuning. So I'm going to uh, preview it here, show you guys what it looks like on my blaster. I'm actually going to send it to my warrior, though, because I think it looks cooler on lightsaber. So. Uh, it's going to apply on our main hand blaster here. As you can see, it just sort of puts a bunch of branches around the blaster. I don't really care for how it looks on blasters. We'll zoom in a little bit here. Uh, if my character would stop waving her guns around at the preview screen so we could get a look at it, that would be nice. But you guys get the idea. Basically, it's a bunch of branches around the gun. Somewhat cool. I personally think it looks way better on the lightsabers, so I'm going to mail it to my warrior, and we're going to swap over there. So I've got my UI off here so you guys can see it. So you can see the little bit of branch detail around the hilt of my lightsaber. Um, I'm going to equip my lightsaber here. 
And you can see it actually, the branches, when you turn the blade on, it actually spirals up the blade a little bit. So it's really cool. I'm going to try and zoom in here, get you guys a slightly better look. Sorry about the camera angles. Trying to get in close enough here so that we can get a really close look at it. Come on. Nope, too close. There we go. All right, super close up look at it. So it curls around the handle there, and it actually goes up the blade a little bit. And that will actually retract along with the blade when we put our lightsaber away. So if you just pay attention to the stuff around the blade, it has a cool little sound effect, and it sort of retreats up the blade and comes out again when you turn it on. It's a really cool little weapon tuning. Uh, there's none others like it in the game. It's very unique. So yeah, thanks guys.